You know when you try to make something special happen by bringing two things together? A true fusion that might give you the best of both worlds? It's something we do with a lot of things, but sometimes we take that in directions that might be questionable at best. Case in point, we do it with animals. There are times when nature or man try to breed something unique by having two different animals mate, and it's not only the fusions that are weird, but the names that they're given as well. Here now are 20 bizarre hybrid animals that actually exist. Number 20. Tigans. Can you guess what a tigan is? Just take a moment and kind of think about it and ponder over it. Tigan, tigan, hmm, I wonder. Oh yeah, it's what a lion and tiger crossbreed into. But to be clear, that's not exactly as simple as it sounds, because believe it or not, there are actually two different hybrids that can be made between a tiger and a lion, and it all depends on which gender the males and females are. As you can probably guess by the name, the tigans are what happens when a male lion mates with a female lion. But while this may sound cool because of the big cats that are used, you might need to temper your expectations upon seeing these all over the place. Tigans were first bred and exhibited in zoos in the 19th century. Now, this breeding practice has been banned due to conservation issues. Yes, believe it or not, you're going to be hearing a lot of things about how forced hybrids don't exactly work out the way that people intend them to. Case in point for the Tigan, if a male Tigan is born, they're actually infertile. But if it's a female Tigan, they can actually give birth. But even with that, it's not exactly a good thing because that makes it much harder to give birth to more Tigans. But wait, there's more. Due to how these two creatures don't naturally mate, they can cause mental issues in the offspring. Because tigers are meant to be loner animals, and lions are always in prides, and that makes the Tigan offspring unsure of what exactly they're supposed to be, and thus they're known to be depressed at times and incredibly aggressive at others. If that's still not enough for you, well, the Tigans have a lesser lifespan than their parents, the lion and the tiger, and because of their incompatible nature, they're more than likely to get diseases like cancer. So let it be a lesson that just because you can make a hybrid doesn't mean that you should make a hybrid. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Zebroid. As I noted in my intro, a lot of these hybrids have really, really dumb names, and the zebroid is no exception. A zebroid is the offspring of any cross between a zebra and any other equine in order to create the hybrid, which is a pretty wide net when you think about it, and not something that often happens when it comes to animal hybrids, and yet there you go, zebroids. They physically resemble their non-zebra parent, but are striped like a zebra, which is a choice, I guess. Now look, I'm not gonna lie, this is a hybrid that doesn't really need to exist, and yet it does happen more than you may think. Even Charles Darwin himself found a lot of zebroid-style hybrids in his days of exploring the animal kingdom. So it's not just a man-made thing like the Tigan. What's more, despite their odd nature, various zebroids have appeared in all sorts of pop culture, which includes television shows, books, and more. But much like the Tigans, they don't always have the best genetics, and that includes many of them becoming sterile when they're born, further proving the point about not always needing to have a hybrid or trying to make one happen naturally. And yet one could argue that because it can happen naturally, and with all sorts of different species of equine no less, that it should be allowed. I'll just chalk this one up to people having differences about the animal kingdom, because we all know how that goes. Number 18. Pizzly Bear 
Now I'll talk about this animal and why it might actually be a necessary hybrid for once, but can I talk about its name? the Pizzly Bear. I mean, seriously, with all the brilliant scientists and creative writers out there, we can't come up with a better name than the Pizzly Bear? Yes, it's a fusion between the Polar Bear and the Grizzly Bear, obviously, so it's a standard name fusion, but that's no excuse. These are bears. They should sound menacing or reflective of what they are as a species. This name is just embarrassing though, and I'm not at all happy about it. But believe it or not, it's actually the state of our world that's causing more and more pizzly bears to be made because science tells us that global warming is causing all sorts of havoc on the polar ice caps and that's affecting a lot of wildlife, especially in the polar bear. Due to this, they're heading south and due to the heat, the grizzly bears are coming north. And that means that for the first time in known history, these species are coming into contact with one another more and more and they're getting together, making the terribly named pizzly bear. Now the fusion has a chance to take on the best traits of both bears and ensure that they can and will survive in the new conditions that the world is setting up. Will it work? Well, nobody can honestly say, but there's a chance that it will, and scientists can't prove it yet because it's still not a fully researched fusion. But if there's a chance it'll save the bears in its own way, well then we should all accept it. I'm just not going to accept their name. Number 17, the Puma Pard. And here I thought that Pizzly Bear was the worst name I'd utter today. It's pretty simple and terrible, but the Puma part is very much right up there. If you look at it too hard, you might actually miss what this particular animal is a fusion of. The answer, as it were, is the Puma and the Leopard. Male for the former, female for the latter. However, unlike the bear from last time, this is indeed a man-made creation. In the late 1890s and early 1900s, two hybrids would be born in Chicago, followed two years later by three sets of twin cubs that were born in Hamburg, Germany. Carl Hackenbeck apparently bred several litters of Puma Leopard hybrids in 1898 at the suggestion of a menagerie owner in Britain, which is honestly rather terrifying when you think about it, because that literally means that a man thought, hmm, what if you mix a puma and a leopard? I should find someone to do that for me. And that's exactly what happened. And that's where a sad part of this story comes in, because this was clearly not meant to happen, as pretty much everything puma pard that was born would be infused with a form of dwarfism. Meaning in this case that they didn't get close to the size of their parents. Another byproduct of incompatible DNA on a birthing level. That's also why you honestly don't have a lot, or in many cases, Puma parts being born in the modern day, they were an experiment from a bygone era that served no true purpose and showed just how some animals shouldn't be mated. Number 16. Green Sea Slug now for a hybrid that's honestly quite a bit different from what we've been talking about, but in a good way, because this is a natural fusion and one that's honestly one of a kind based on what we understand about the creature itself, which isn't as much as we'd like. Basically, this is a fusion between a sea slug and algae, a true plant-animal hybrid that continues to boggle the minds of all those who observe it. The other reason this is unique is that the slug literally steals the plant's nature into becoming a hybrid. There's a breakdown from one scientist that says that it's about the length of a postage stamp or two and that the slugs feed on the algae by sucking out all the delicious gelatinous cytoplasm and crunchy protein nuggets from the underwater plants. In the process, they end up slurping up some chloroplasts that are known as plastids. These are green jelly bean shaped organelles that perform photosynthesis, capturing the sun's energy and then combining it with carbon dioxide and water in order to make food. Most sap vacuuming slugs do digest the chloroplasts right away, but some of them, well, they store them for weeks, if not months, in large transparent digestive glands, which turns the animal brilliant shades of green. Hence why they've become the green sea slug. And many of them are trying to wonder how this slug was able to even realize it could do this and how exactly it got the ability to steal all the traits of the algae itself. 
As one scientist would note, there's no way that the plant components should work in animal cells, and yet they do, and they do it very well. When the slug is in a well-lit lab, it can go months without eating due to photosynthesis. It's rare to be impressed by a slug, however in this case, you're absolutely allowed to. Oh, and its name isn't stupid, so that's a bonus as well. Number 15. Henny. Now, because the Henny is an absolutely stupid name, I probably jinxed it, especially when you realize that this is the name for a fusion between a male donkey and a female horse. How the heck did they even get Henny from that? Actually, I really don't want to know. I really don't care. Hennies are not similar to mules in that they're generally more intelligent than horses and more cooperative than donkeys. Both are also healthier and less expensive to feed and maintain than horses, and that might actually sound appealing to some because both horses and donkeys on their own can be a bit difficult. But here, well, here you get a smarter and mostly healthier creature that will help you on your journey wherever that may be. There are a few things to note about the henny species that might sour your opinions on them though. First off, they're not exactly consistent in terms of size and stature due to the wildly different sizes that donkeys can come in at times. Furthermore, the two species actually have different numbers of chromosomes which can hurt certain things in the genetic process. Case in point, of all the confirmed cases of the species, only one of them was fertile. That's honestly one of the biggest reasons you'll never really see or be able to obtain one for yourself. A henny are hard to breed and keep on breeding, especially when you remember that horses and donkeys can be very particular about their mates. So many times, it's because of people that they even try such a thing. When will we ever learn? Number 14. Bengal Cat while this isn't a bad name for a hybrid animal, it is a bad hybrid animal overall, and not for the reasons you're likely thinking. Because at this point, you might think it's a bad animal because of forced breeding and fertility and more, but no, this is bad because people made the thing to sell it, and people actually buy it without realizing the mess that they're getting into. Are you confused about it? Well, allow me to explain. In the pet industry, there's a large desire among certain clients, like rich people, for some something a little more exotic than that standard cat. Because clearly there's not enough options for regular domestic cats. Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? Well, good. Anyways, the breeder's solution to this was to make an exotic kind of cat mixing special wild species with domestic species, and that's when the Bengal cat came to life. And when people get this wild cat, they learn very quickly that it is indeed a wild cat, which often results in not too long after they get them, they try to give them away. The irony here is that there are places that perfectly show you how to take care of your Bengal cat. You just need to put a little more time and effort into getting things done, you know, like any good pet owner would. Either way, the Bengal cat is an example of animal breeding that's gone too far because it's all about the money and the people fall for the trap. Number 13. The Black Tip Shark so far, I've shown you animals that if you really think about it, would be viable in some way for hybrids, and you wouldn't really mind it. You know, cats, bears, donkeys, horses. But when it comes to the idea of a shark being a hybrid, well, that's enough to terrify you to kingdom come, no doubt. The good news is that this doesn't happen that often in the animal kingdom, and it hasn't happened yet with ones like the tiger shark or the great white. I'd probably be doomed if that were the case. However, in Australia, the first first shark hybrid would be discovered via the black tip shark. The creatures are a cross between the common black tip shark and the Australian black tip shark. See, you keep the name simple, everything else just kind of falls into place. It's not really that hard, scientists. However, there is a kicker, and that's where the terrifying thing comes in. Because much like the bear fusion from earlier, the belief among scientists is that these sharks make hybrids, which for the record are fertile despite being genetically different species, all in order to battle climate change. One of these sharks prefers tropical 
tropical waters and the other prefers colder. So when the fusion happens, well, the offspring, they're potentially good anywhere. That means that these new black tip sharks could have a far greater range in our world, and that might be problematic for various ecosystems and people. Oh, and as if that wasn't scary enough, another belief is that the fusion might make them stronger than their parents, because that's exactly what we need in this world, much stronger sharks. Number 12, hybrid kangaroos. I don't pretend to understand all the ideas that go into making these hybrid animals, but can't you leave some of them alone? What did kangaroos ever do to anyone that makes you think of going and making new ones that might be better or even worse? The hybrid kangaroos don't even have a true hybrid name. A part of that is because these marsupials only mate with others outside of their species when they're in captivity, and they're basically forced to mate. Some of them have some really bad side effects, and while the females are at most times fertile after the fusion, one male was actually born with no eyes. And again, these fusions do happen when they're in captivity, which means that their choices of mate become slim, and thus they have no real options outside of what's available in front of them, which is partly the design of it all. Have you honestly seen a kangaroo up close? They're pretty powerful creatures and freaking awesome, and they don't need any improvements through fusions because they're already really great creatures. Now, if this was a case where a fusion would help them to survive a set of conditions in the wild and it didn't hurt the animal overall, well, yeah, I'd be all for it. That's not the case here, and that makes me kind of angry. So I'm just going to move on. Number 11, Koi Dog. Back to the stupid names we go. I mean, seriously, you couldn't think of a better name than Koi Dog? That'll easily get confused for you saying that you have a Koi Dog. No? Nobody caught that? The Koi Dog is a particularly controversial crossbreed because they're at more times than not a mix between a wild canine and a domesticated dog. The breed doesn't particularly matter in this case. Now, if you wonder if this happens often in the nature way, well, it doesn't at all. Because if you think about it, wild canines and domestic dogs have entirely different personalities, mating rituals, and more. Plus, it's a short breeding season, and that can make it even more uncommon for a koi dog to be born outside of a forced set. So why do they exist? Well, for the same reason that the Bengal cat does because people feel the need for an exotic pet and they don't see any problems of this fusion dog. The irony though is that some of them actually report that the koi dog can be a great pet and thus the popularity of them has grown over the last few years. But just as many report that if you get the wrong mix, you could get a very temperamental pet that is just as much work as having a child. There are also places, meaning countries, who sometimes have restrictions or straight up bans on species like the koi dog and as such, you have to be careful if you try to get one or even try to breed one on your own. Number 10, Moulard. Depending on your knowledge of waterfowl, you might find it easy to discern that the moulard is a fusion between two kinds of domestic duck, because of course you would all know that. Now, I've shown you a lot of fusions that have very suspicious motives, but sadly, I'm about to show you a species in the moulard that's actually bred for one reason and one reason only. That would be the slaughter. You see, in various farming and meat industries, it's not only about having a healthy subject to get the best meat. It's also about having the right amount of meat in each animal in order to ensure that you can get the most money from it. And the Moulard is a special kind because it's meatier than the parents that birthed it. In 2007, there were actually 35 million Moulard ducks that were raised in the country of France, all in order for them to be turned into meat and foie gras. They're now infinitely popular amongst everyone due to their ability to be bred with better meat and have a more calm disposition to ensure that they don't Put up a fight when they're actually alive. Sometimes humans can just be pretty cruel. Number nine, Zubron. Now this is not a special animal that's made by LeBron James, though given that he's apparently worth a billion dollars, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried something like this. The Zubron is actually a hybrid of domestic cattle and Wissant. The Wissant is the European bison, hence the Zubron, and the name Zubron was officially chosen from hundreds of proposals sent to the Polish weekly magazine that I can't pronounce during a contest organized in 1969. 
And to be honest, I can appreciate that. It means that the people had a say in naming the animal. Was it a perfect name? Well, to each their own, but at least they tried to let people have a say, and I can be glad from that. What I cannot appreciate, though, is that this is another animal that's bred for its meat, and even more so, due to the crossbreeding, they're more resistant to diseases and can handle harsher weather conditions. Number 8. Zonkey now, seriously, do people even try to come up with names on their own that are both interesting and not just a basic fusion name? As I showed you with the Zubron, it's really not that hard. Getting back to the topic at hand, the Zonkey is, as you would expect, the fusion of a zebra and a donkey. Why some people felt the need to make this creature is beyond me, and also beyond the capabilities to see a lot of them as they're born sterile. It is true that they can happen naturally, but a vast number of them are actually born via captivity in zoos who really want to have one. Again, showing that humans can be inconsiderate to animals, all in order to get attractions. Oh, and apparently there are two different versions of this animal, depending on the gender of the parents, and the other one's name, the Zebadonk. Now I rest my case. Number 7. The Mystery Monkey Well now, who doesn't love a good mystery? And I honestly could use a break from all the terrible names of hybrids, so I'll take a vague title. What's more, this is the story that's from very recent times via Borneo. You see, scientists were doing some investigating a few years back when they spotted a monkey that appeared to be a fusion between two other local monkey species. But that's not the full twist in this story. That would be that the monkeys are fighting for territory, so them breeding wouldn't have been the logical thing, and yet here we are. You could say that it's a Romeo and Juliet monkey. Based on what they know, they felt that the hybrid was one between a proboscis monkey and a silvery langur. Pictures would surface of this in 2020, revealing that it had grown into an adult and even had an offspring of its own. Number 6. Okapi now I want to be clear on something, while this creature may look like a fusion, it's actually not one. It looks like a fusion between a deer and a zebra, but it's actually just a regular animal that looks like a fusion. And what's more, it's not even related to a deer or a zebra, it's the only living relative to the giraffe. They're not as tall as their relatives though, and they don't have that long neck, and thus they only stand about 4 foot 9 on average. But they can be 8 feet long and weigh about 770 pounds at maximum, so it is a big girthy girl in its own right. If you're wondering why you've never seen one before, it's because they're an endangered species in Africa. Their habitats keep getting cut down, and so they're under conservation watch. Hopefully it doesn't go away, because this is one fusion that I'll happily support. Number 5. The Cat Dog Now I can appreciate anyone who gets a reference to the classic Nickelodeon television show, and thankfully that particular kind of fusion is still only in the realm of cartoons, for now at least. However, there were those who believed that a creature was indeed a hybrid between these two. The pictures show that the pet in question, and one has to admit that it does have certain characteristics that do make it resemble a cat and a dog together. Although others feel that it was just a very unique fusion between two species of dog, and I'm leaning more in their direction for the simple reason that the idea of a cat and dog having a hybrid baby is just unappealing and unrealistic in various ways. Ways. Technically speaking, as scientists have not yet disproved it, it's not impossible, though I'm not pushing for it and neither should you. Number 4. The Three-Way Hybrid this is another recent find, as a citizen scientist in Pennsylvania has appeared to have discovered the offspring of a hybrid warbler mother and a warbler father from an entirely different genus, a combination never recorded before, and which resulted in a unique three-species hybrid bird. 
The person who found it didn't only make wild tales, they did work to get pictures and video of the bird in order to prove that it was real. And the more that they studied it, the more they realized that they did indeed have a very rare kind of hybrid that was 100% done in nature. And if this kind of hybrid exists naturally in the world, then there are more possibilities that could be truly mind-blowing. Number 3. Boar Pig Hybrid no, I won't pick on this name because it's just saying what it is. In this instance, it's a hybrid between a Eurasian wild boar and any old domestic pig. It's very simple for qualifications, wouldn't you say? And that's actually part of the problem because this is the first hybrid species on the list that's not only able to happen naturally in good numbers, but it's actually become an invasive species. Yes indeed, the boar pig hybrid is so numerous in places like Australia that they're actually hunted down without fear or prejudice due to the people trying to whittle down their numbers in order to just stop their spread. So this is actually a case of nature making a hybrid and humanity regretting its creation. Oh, the irony in this one. Number 2. The Blood Parrot Now that's a hybrid name, simplistic yet terrifying. Or at least it would be if it was actually a bird hybrid and not about fish. What's more, this is a crossbreed that was made in vitro by taking the genes of one fish and literally infusing them into another one. This was actually backed up by many who found out these fish have deformities due to their breeding. Thus, various questions about ethics have been raised about making hybrids of this nature. For example, one of the deformities can be their mouth, where, when they're born, they have a mouth that's basically too small to eat the most basic of food and thus subjugating them to malnutrition just because they're born. And the people who made the fish? Well, they made another hybrid fish later on via the flower horn, which they made to sell for big money. Number 1. Human Z I'm going to keep this one short and sweet because it's frankly rather disgusting. There's a scientist who claims that the genetic material of man was put into the womb of a female chimpanzee and a hybrid creature was actually born. But then after certain ethical questions were raised, the human Z was euthanized. Whether this is actually something that really happened, that's besides the point, because I honestly wouldn't be surprised if someone did try to do this given all the beliefs that humans and primates are very close relatives DNA wise. But it would also be completely disgusting and shocking that anyone would allow this to happen in the first place and then basically try to cover it up as an experiment. It just goes to show that sometimes humans go too far in order to prove a point or satisfy their own curiosity. And that's why making hybrids is increasingly becoming a controversial topic. That's all from the realm of fused animals that actually exist in our world today? Does hearing about these animals make you kind of concerned, or were you in awe of the actual fusions that we get to see in one form or another? And are there any others that should end up on this list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments below, check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.